All right, guys, this video is probably going to upset a few people, but today I'm going to be talking about the worst thing that ever happened to EDC and calling out some people that I think you shouldn't trust when it comes to the knife community and EDC community as a whole. I'm not going to try to say, say it in a super biased way, saying that they're, you know, too new to the knife community to make the impact that they have, but I think that there are a few characters in the knife community that, um, have promoted a certain type of EDC or knife life that is very incongruent and I think have kind of negatively impacted the EDC community. And obviously, of course, it is not directly their entire fault, but I don't like these few people and we're going to get into why I don't like them in this video. So the two primary characters that I think are very degradatory or ultimately have had a negative impact on the EDC community are Best Damn EDC or Taylor Martin and Ben Peterson. And they have worked in the knife community quite a bit in their own different facets and primarily Best Damn EDC. I think with Taylor Martin, he started out with really good intentions and those intentions were to kind of ultimately talk about the community. He did a lot of photo and knife um, kind of reviews on his channel where he would go over different um, EDCs and kind of just judge them ultimately. And there's a blessing and a curse to that. I think part of it and the reason why a lot of us EDC and knife nuts kind of flocked to that was once again, it came back and it came down to the fact that we all want to be a part of a community, a family, and, you know, we want to have this core, you know, personality or this core, you know, enthusiasm about knives that really links us all together. And once again, I've been to different places and communities, kind of like gatherings with knife lovers. And it's really fun to EDC check people and talk about like, oh, what knife are you carrying? You know, why are you carrying that? You know, what makes that special? And that type of communal, um, you know, familial bond is really important and very valuable. And the fact that he was able to do it in videos, I think is the primary reason why people loved it and flocked to his channel. However, and we'll get to Ben Peterson in a little bit, but very similar to Ben is that they ended up taking this community stance that they had and ended up making it very monopolized for consumerism. And they ended up working with knife companies and EDC companies like Big Idea Designs and many others to promote a type of product and a type of style of things that you should buy because they endorse it and because they, you know, help or had a helping hand in manufacturing it. And once again, I think where they lost their touch and where they became degradatory to the EDC community was in the fact of trying to push this consumerism. So they kind of got out of this lifestyle of, you know, this is our community and really enjoying, you know, growing and fostering this community as a whole, highlighting people with really interesting and neat, you know, interesting uh, EDC knives or watches or pens. And it kind of became a consumerism type deal where, you know, especially in those videos, especially the, the last ones or the latter of them, you know, he was really talking about like, you know, the brands and, you know, how much they cost and really turning it into a consumeristic typed mindset. And I think with the EDC community, it is a bit of a trick because we are talking about a similar bond that we all have over items that you can purchase. So invariably, there will kind of be a underlying level of consumerism. I think it's very similar to the car community, and I think many EDC people are also conversely in the car community. Um, but, you know, with the car community as its own community, you know, it, it does lend itself to being a very consumeristic thing because, say, you know, you come to a Cars and Coffee and you have a vehicle and someone else has the same vehicle but they have a bigger turbo and they have you know their car makes more horsepower and you know looks even better then it leads you to want to buy some of those similar upgrades and you know if you end up losing sight and you're just doing it to get the fastest car you can make um, it ends up becoming something that you know you're just dumping tons of money into and at best it's something that um, 
and it becomes something that ends up looking like you're just dumping tons of money into something to chase a pipe dream. And the real reason the community exists, knife community, car community, is for us to share our passions. And when it comes to sharing passions, that should mean that you're genuinely happy with what you have or you're working on creating something that will, you know, genuinely speak to or evoke a type of emotion within yourself that is, you know, like happiness. You know, this, not necessarily that this, you know, quantitative item makes you happy, but seeing something come together, seeing something that is essentially an expression of who you are as a physical form, whether that be a car, whether that be a knife, or whether that be multiple things, brings you happiness. Now, once again, this is a kind of like a metaphysical thing that I'm not going to run down this rabbit hole of should you, you know, have knives that make you happy or, you know, um, should that be your end goal for collecting knives? You know, that's up to you. And once again, you want to be careful not to be become too materialistic because trucks, cars, knives, guns, you know, can only bring you so much happiness if you're not personally happy within yourself, but they can be used as an extension of self-expression. I think that is important to an extent, and it is important that we all express ourselves in our own unique ways. And once again, there just so happens to be a community of people that express themselves through knives. Now, once again, when you have that form of self-expression, it's one of those things that, you know, can be open to exploitation. And that's where Ben Peterson, or as some people may know him as the owner of NAFSCO, um, he also worked with CRKT, he worked with Blade HQ extensively, and arguably he was the marketing genius that brought the success to Blade HQ. Blade HQ, um, I mean, I was there before Ben Peterson, obviously being in the knife community, I knew about all the knife places to go for reputable knives and I was always already buying knives from Blade HQ before Ben Peterson but Ben really put it on the map and he was essentially the face to the name and I think with a lot of companies success is heavily derivative on having a really good face to a name you know you can have Blade HQ but unless you can think about Blade HQ as a specific type of you know character um, it's going to be very hard to you know monetize it and really make it all of what it can be and so a really good face to a name can be incredibly important and I think that's what Ben was to Blade HQ and why Blade HQ is the giant that they are is heavily heavily reliant on him now obviously he's no longer as affiliated with Blade HQ at least in the formal marketing sense but uh, he was that for them he was that for CRKT for a little while too but you know others as well but now he has branched off and he is making NAFSCO and once again I think Ben was a really good example similar to um similar to Taylor Martin, where in the beginning, they capitalized on really connecting with the community, building a level of trust and desirability. And during his time at Blade HQ, their YouTube channel was booming. And that was when I started watching their YouTube videos more and took them more seriously as a YouTube uh, presence because they made genuinely engaging knife videos for people who were nerdy about knives, people who like to talk about different blade steels, different, you know, types of handle options, lock variants, you know, I believe under his time they did um, different tests for like how strong um, or how much pressure it takes to break certain knife locks like frame locks compression locks, access locks. And so these were genuine questions that people had at the time. And it was really nice to see videos that spoke to the knife consumers. Nowadays, unfortunately, Blade HQ and once again, Ben Peterson have really shilled themselves out and they do videos of like, these are the hottest new knives we've got in for this month. And this is where you can buy them. And I think once again, that's a very disingenuous path to take for people who really do care about knives you know, who really do care about the community. And once again, I think that that should be the focus of knife tubers as a whole and knife, even dealers such as Blade HQ, is that at the core, we're not necessarily people to be exploited. We are, you know, we're not statistics in numbers to be used to funnel towards more sales and product, but we are humans and we do like knives. We do like to buy knives, but what we really want is engagement with community members. What we want is a form of community and a form, a sense of a familial bond with each other 
because we are all, you know, generally people who really do love sharp bladed objects and find different ones more and less appealing. Nowadays, unfortunately, we've kind of taken this route in the knife community, largely once again due to dealers, distributors, and influencers of the sneaker community where, you know, we see certain things like, you know, coins, we see certain, you know, blade styles or certain types of limited edition things and releases that, you know, are being artificially made and artificially forced scarcity upon them so that people in the knife community will run out and buy them and flip them. And once again, when that happens to a community, I really don't like being a part of that, that um, behavior behavior or that part of the community because it is extremely disingenuous and at that point you're really transcending um, how you view your fellow community members and I you know some people have brought up you know justifications and you know I'm not going to sit here and say if you flip knives you're a piece of garbage but what I am going to say is that in my own opinion I don't flip knives and I don't like to flip knives because what that really means is that I see my fellow community members when you when you go to that level of flipping, once again, at least in my opinion, um, you see fellow community members not as individuals who share common passion, and once again, the, the people who you have familial bonds with, but that you're seeing other community members as a dollar sign, because that's ultimately what it is. I look at, you know, um, other aspects of my life, like if this was my family member and I had something that they needed or wanted, what would I do for them? Like say, just for instance, I, say I have a snowboard helmet that I'm no longer using, right? Or that doesn't fit me or whatever. You know, would I look at that and be like, oh, well, this is a chance for me to make money off of my family member or, you know, jack prices up, you know, on something that they want. And the answer is no, you know, I'm not going to exploit family members for my own benefit, right? And so I, I think of it in the same way that uh, I think of the knife community and knives as a whole in a similar way. And that is, you know, if I have a knife that you want, that I want to sell, um, I, am I going to exploit you for that? No, I'm not going to, you know, try to jack up prices on a knife to try to see you as a dollar sign. And so, you know, people like Ben Peterson and people like Taylor Martin, um, they're not solely responsible for this ideology or this type of mindset within the community. But once again, they have played their hand in really making these limited edition releases come to life. They've really helped push and forward the type of consumeristic mindset that, once again, when you do this type of breaking down EDCs by their value. We're talking about like the most expensive EDCs to make it into the this certain video. You know, you're really putting a price on people's collections. And once again, that's not always bad. And sometimes it's fun, but it's pushing that consumeristic mindset of now I need to get the avocado colored, you know, mini Adamus because it's the limited edition cool one, right? It's, it's what everyone wants. And so this guy isn't actually limited edition or particularly collectible, but there are REC or River's Edge Cutlery versions of the Shaman and the Manix 2 and a handful of others that are wildly expensive. Like we're talking the normal Manix 2 is, you know, $120, right? The Plain Jane, no frills Manix 2, but the REC version is $400. And so once again, you know, that is far beyond what the actual materials and design are, but we know that flippers are trying to take advantage of people. And so once again, you know, people have brought up to me and tried to rationalize the idea of flipping as, you know, I want to keep this knife. And so you're paying me that extra that you're paying me is for me to give you that knife. But in my opinion, and once again, this is solely my opinion, if you truly want a knife to keep, it's not a knife that's for sale. Like if you came up to me or, you know, came into my messages and said, hey, you know, I really like that uh, Chris Reeve knife, Sabenza, you know, with my Carta inlay, the large Sabenza 21 with the Tonto tip, you know, I'll give you $800 for it. That's, that's certainly a generous offer. And I'd probably tell you, you can find it for cheaper elsewhere. But 
genuinely, I would not sell that knife, not even for, you know, like a thousand dollars. And the reason why is because I want this in my collection, right? It's similar to the Strider SNG. Someone came up to me, even though this knife has a current street value of about 600 to $650, right? And say they were like, I'll give you 1200 for it. That'd be an extremely generous offer. And once again, I would tell them you can probably find it cheaper for elsewhere. But the reality is I wouldn't sell it because I want it in my collection. Things like the Strider SNG, I value because it is an older knife design and it is a design that was popular when I was coming up in the knife community and just didn't have the money to buy these knives. And now that I do have the money, once again, similar to this Emerson, you know, Minicom, it's like I didn't have the money at the time to buy this Minicom, but now that I do, I'm going to buy it, right? And so these are knives that I've wanted in my collection for a very long time, and I very much value the community and history aspect of these knives. And that I think is the most important point. And once again, I feel like people like Ben Peterson and uh, Taylor Martin, you know, they've really, they've shifted the idea of the knife community to being something that like, you should get knives that really speak to you. You should get knives that really mean something to you, that have a larger value to you, as opposed to just, hey, I want a knife that looks purple or has spaceship cats on it or has Nintendo Wii handles. Like all of these things, I mean, unless they truly speak to you, are all kind of worthless and they're really being prop propped up because they have an idea of a limited edition to them. And I think limited edition is something that's been overused on many different uh you know communities once again the sneaker community is definitely one of those where limited drops come out and it's bought up super quick and sold for super high amounts of money and um it's definitely unfortunate to see but you know once again these two individuals have definitely helped the community out becoming what it is and once again i don't want to sit here and bash these two individuals there are certainly a number of other individuals in the community that have assisted um, with this and then once again there are of course distributors like blade hq that came out with their donut operator or dessert warrior you know um typed themed knives um you know there are other companies like river's edge that have you know propped up the you know avocado knife coloration you know even going as far as to make you know like little trade coins of like little avocados and stuff and they really are dedicated to that and once again all of that stuff is very worthless um, all that stuff you know really goes away from the core of what a knife is these are our tools they're supposed to be usable functional and at the end of the day if you're paying four hundred dollars for an rec shaman um or an rec you know manix you're missing the point here you know these are supposed to be usable tools and don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with spending four hundred dollars on a four hundred dollar knife but something that you're just jumping on the hype train because it's the latest coolest thing you're setting yourself up to be very disappointed and i think in the end a lot of people in the EDC community will feel very jaded, and if not already feel jaded by, uh, if not already feel jaded with their experiences in the knife community. I mean, I know it came as a real kick in the pants when people like Taylor Martin made a video talking about how they literally live the dream life uh, that some people wish they could live, you know, literally making money off of being an EDC influencer, and that's not good enough for them. They feel they need to, you know, change the way they do things, and things have gotten too boring or monotonous for them, and it's like they're living the dream life that many people wish they could, um, and they take it for granted, and that makes it very hard to genuinely feel sympathetic or it makes it really hard to feel like you relate to that individual or their struggles because their struggles are so much higher, you know, like they, or their struggles are so much more nuanced and petty than your struggles, you know. Um, and so part of me is like you want to feel like you can relate to some of these people, but they are just not very relatable people is how I feel the EDC community has been ruined. And if you guys agree, great. Uh, if you guys don't agree, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely looking forward to catching some flack for this video, but I feel like this is something that's been on my mind. I've talked about it a lot with different people, and I feel like 
at some point it has to be said and hopefully other people uh, agree with me. I really want to put this video out not only because this is how I feel, but I hope other people see this and feel this too in the knife community because above all, we could all end the day just by buying Swiss Army knives and rocking Victorinoxes every day. None of these knives are crucial or necessary, but at the end of the day, like really what the knife community is about is expressing yourself through a love of knives. It's just like the car community, you know, it's about expressing yourself through a love of cars, you know. There's, this is a way or a means of self-expression and to see people try to exploit that to make money off of you, just really at the end of the day, like I said, it, it leaves you feeling really jaded and kind of leaves you feeling almost hopeless about the knife community. So I know this has been a bit of a rant, guys. Hopefully it isn't uh, too long and drug, drug out, but like, so that's really how I feel about the knife community. And I could talk on this subject probably for hours. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.